welcome class for our physics tutorial the topic today is reflection at curved surfaces reflection at curved surfaces so the first thing we need to understand how many types of curved surfaces do we have in our normal today lives so the first type of curved surface is a concave mirror we also have a convex mirror and we also have a parabolic reflector and we also have a parabolic reflector so we need to understand what does each term mean and how is its orientation to its reflecting surface the first one which is a concave mirror a concave mirror is a type of curved mirror which curved inwards a type of curved mirror which curved inwards it is polished from the outside it is polished from the outside being polished means the outer side is painted polished or silvered and that will make the inner side to be its reflecting surface so it is polished from the outside so that its reflecting surface is from the inside so if you take the curved substance and you paint or polish the outer side then you will end up with a concave mirror the second one is a convex mirror it is a type of curved mirror which curves outward it is a type of curved mirror which curves outwards it is polished from the inside so that its reflecting surface is from the outside it simply means if you take any curved surfaces which can be a glass or a mirror and it is curved and you paint the inner side you paint the inner side then it means the reflecting surface will be the outer side then you will end up with a convex mirror the third one is a parabolic reflector the third one is a parabolic reflector it is a special type of a concave mirror it is a special type of a concave mirror in that it is more curved it is more curved and has only one true point of focus it is more curved and has only one true point of focus for all the incident rays parallel to principal axis in practical or daily life we normally use a parabolic reflector in car headlamps we can use parabolic reflector in the torches the one that touch a special type of this parabolic reflector or even in telescopes the one in telescope is also a special type of a parabolic reflector the next thing is to get familiarized with the diagram of a convex and a concave mirror and as you can see in the first part a it is a convex mirror why do you say it's a convex mirror because you can see it is curved and the inner side is what is polished or silvered so which means the only reflecting surface is the outer one so we say it's a convex mirror and part b you can see it is painted from the outside painting means you silver you can silver it from the outside which means the reflecting surface is the inner side and we end up with a concave mirror now for the mirror itself it has several components several parts and each part has a specific function so let us see the difference the parts of a concave mirror and the difference in the parts of a convex mirror as you can see <coughs> in a concave mirror let us see an F are in front of the reflecting surface. Let us see an F are in front of the reflecting surface. But in a convex mirror, 
they are behind or reflecting surface that's why you see dots coming or extension of the dots towards point a so we understand what does letter c stand for letter f what does it stand for and the center of these mirrors how do we call the center of these mirrors and what is the distance between c and f the distance between c and f and also the distance between letter c to the center the middle point of this mirror there you go the first one is letter c letter c is called center of curvature letter c is called center of curvature you can see letter c in a concave mirror it is in front and a convex mirror it is at the behind and we call it center of curvature what does center of curvature really stand for center of curvature this is the center of the sphere of which the mirror is part of this is the center of the sphere of which the mirror is part of the center itself is called the pole the center itself is called the pole again you can see the line joining c f towards the center of this mirror the middle point of that mirror that line joining c f to the center of this mirror even in the convex mirror you can also see the line joining c f to the center of the mirror how do you call that line that line is called number two principal axis that line is called principal axis and it is the line joining the center of curvature c the line joining the center of curvature c to the pole p the line joining the center of curvature c to the pole p we say the pole p is the center of that mirror the center of that mirror if you take that mirror and you put a hole at the center that center you call p the pole again we have point f you can see letter f in a concave mirror letter f is at the front and a convex mirror letter f is at the behind what does this letter f simply stand for <coughs> number three letter f stand for principal focus principal focus and it is a point on the principal axis it's a point on the principal axis you can see it is a point on the principal axis through which all the rays parallel i've said f means principal focus and we define principal fo principal focus as it is a point on the principal axis through which all the rays parallel and close to the principal axis passes after reflection it is a point on the principal axis through which all the rays parallel and close to the principal axis passes after reflection that is for a concave mirror you can see the past one there's a ray at the top and that ray you can see it bounces back get reflected through point f for concave mirror it is it really pass it actually pass through point f but if you see convex mirror it just appear to come from it appears to come from in a convex mirror that's how you use the dotted line so in a convex mirror it is a point through which all the rays parallel and close to the principal axis appears to originate from after reflection it is a point on the principal axis through which all the rays 
parallel and close to the principal axis appears to come from after reflection. You can see the convex mirror, they appear to come from a reflection. And something appearing is not real. Something appearing is not real. So in a convex mirror, we say any image in a convex mirror is virtual. Any image in a convex mirror is virtual. A special type of a convex mirror, you can look at the side mirrors. Side mirrors. The image inside mirrors, you cannot touch them, which means they are virtual. You cannot touch them, which means they are virtual. But in a concave mirror, they, from, they are from actual rays. So you say they are real images. So F is virtual for a convex mirror. F is virtual for a convex mirror. Why is it virtual for a convex mirror? Because we use dotted lines towards point F. You can see we are using dotted lines towards point F. And again, F is real for a concave mirror. F is real for a concave mirror, which means you can see the, the actual rays passes through F. The actual rays passes through F. The next thing is radius of curvature. Radius of curvature. Radius of curvature is normally indicated as letter R. Radius of curvature is normally indicated as letter R. So what is the radius of curvature? This is the distance from the pole to the center of curvature. This is the distance from the pole to the center of curvature. You can see from letter C. To the pole. We said pole is the midpoint of that mirror itself. Pole, if you take that mirror and put a hole at the midpoint, at the center of it, then that center of that mirror itself is called what? P. So from letter C to the midpoint of that mirror is called F. That distance is called R, I mean. That distance from letter C to the midpoint of that mirror is called radius of curvature. Indicated as letter R. Radius of curvature indicated as letter R. This is the distance from the pole to the center of curvature. This is the distance from the pole to the center of curvature. That is letter R. Radius of curvature, it is from the letter C to the midpoint of the mirror. But if you take the distance from letter F, to the midpoint of the mirror, then we call it focal length. Then we call it focal length. From letter F to the midpoint of that mirror is called focal length. The distance from the pole to the principal focus is called the focal length. The distance from the pole to the principal focus is called the focal length. The next thing or the third type of mirror is a parabolic mirrors. They are produce parabolic mirrors, they produce a wide parallel beam. They produce a wide parallel beam or converge a large beam of light to a point. They produce a wide parallel beam or converge a light beam to a point, which means they have only one focus point. They have only one focus point. And I said earlier that they are widely used in making car headlights. The car headlights, and I, I hope you have seen the headlights of the cars, or in torches or spotlights, or in torches or spotlights. This is the diagram of a parabolic mirror. We say it is more curved as the first thing. So whenever you see a more curved, then what should come into your mind is that this can be a parabolic mirror. Then you check out the painted surface. If you see it is painted from the outside, we say it's a special type of a concave mirror in that it is painted from the what? From the outside and more curved. Then 
this is what we be calling a parabolic what mirror and we also say it has one focus point you can see letter a all the rays you can see all those rays coming through one point all those rays coming through one point that point is called principal focus only one focus point so this is how a parabolic mirror appears if you check at your torch the car head headlamps that is a parabolic mirror a special type you can see is there again let us check the images formed by spherical mirrors how does those images appear how do they get formed and how is their characteristics after formation so before we start drawing the kind of images we need to get the symbol for a concave mirror and we need also to get a symbol for a convex mirror so when drawing ray diagrams when drawing ray diagrams the following symbols are used to represent the mirrors these are the symbols we'll be using to represent the mirrors you can see the first one is a concave mirror why is that con a concave mirror it is polished from the outside which means it is reflecting from the inside the second is a convex mirror why is a convex mirror it is polished from the inside which means the shining sub the reflecting surface or the shining surface is the outer one <clears throat> so before you start drawing any image or any ray diagram for a concave or a convex mirror there are three rules can call them rules or three conditions you must fulfill there are three rules or conditions you must fulfill <clears throat> the first one a ray parallel to the principal axis a ray parallel to the principal axis which is reflected through principal focus whenever you see any parallel ray any parallel ray to the principal axis that ray must pass through principal focus the second one is a ray through center of curvature center of curvature was letter c whenever you see any ray passing through letter c then that ray must that ray must be reflected along its own path that ray must be reflected along its own path since it hit the mirror normally and the third one or the third condition a ray through principal focus principal focus was letter f so whenever you see any ray passing through that letter f that ray must be reflected parallel to the principal so you'll be checking on how they appear and how you can draw such images virtual images means whenever you use a dotted line whenever you use a dotted line then you say it's a virtual image a dotted line means you'll be extending it backward so that you reach the principal focus so whenever it is a dotted line or a dotted ray or extension towards point f that is a virtual image a real image is formed by intersection the meeting of real rays the intersection or the meeting of real rays so here we have let's start with the concave mirror the first one what if your object is at infinity what if your object is at infinity infinity means you can't actually tell where the object is it is something endless that's what we mean by infinity that's why you see in the diagram above we have two parallel rays coming from the sky infinity but when they hit the concave mirror you can see we say that ray they pass they pass and intersect at a point they pass and intersect at a point F. You 
can see parallel rays coming and when they hit the mirror they get reflected back and those reflections will meet at point F so I want to look at point F keenly there is a line drawn with an arrow downwards there is a line drawn at point F with an arrow downwards normally we use arrows to indicate the top of object or image so whenever you see an arrow it simply means that is the top of object or image so this arrow is pointing downwards from point f so the arrow top means the top of object or image and the bottom of this arrow means the foot of the object or image so in point f you can see our arrow is pointing downwards which means that object from the infinity the image has been formed at point f with the head downwards because arrow means the head and the foot at f which means it is inverted so you can be asked give the characteristics of the image formed give the characteristics of the image formed when object is at infinity the first one which is obvious it is real the image is real the first one the image is real why do you say the image is real because intersection of real rays image is real because of intersection of real rays the second characteristics of that image is it is inverted the image is inverted why do you say the image is inverted because it is upside down the head is pointing downwards what the foot is at point f so it is inverted and lastly it is diminished diminished means smaller in size than the actual object so this object at point f you can see it's very small very very small so it is diminished so whenever you ask characteristics of image form an object is at point objects at infinity you say image is real inverted diminished and also form at f the second scenario is when object is at c i want to look at point c point c the object o you can see the object o the arrow is pointing downward uh, upwards i mean the object o the arrow is pointing upwards the arrow means the head the arrow means the head so the first thing when you draw a ray from the head towards the mirror that ray is parallel and we give the condition that whenever you are drawing a parallel ray to the principal axis it has to pass through what through f so you can trace from the object head there's a ray parallel coming to the mirror then reflected through f you can trace it from the object head parallel to the uh, mirror then reflected through what through f and also there's another ray intersecting at f that ray we said any ray passing through f is reflected parallel to the principal axis so you can see at the downer side downer side you can see the rays intersect at the downer side which means where the intersect is where it is where the head of the image is and that point we call the head of the image so this our image you can see where let us see is the image is now pointing downwards so you need to understand how do you draw these rays and the next thing characteristics of that image form the obvious one you can see this our image is real this our image is real why is that image real because it is formed from the intersection of real rays the second thing image is inverted why is the image, image inverted because you can see the arrow is pointing downwards the image is inverted and lastly the image is same size as the object look at the arrow above and the arrow below they are the same size so we say image is same size as the object and the image is formed at point c next one object behind c now we move we just play with the objects we just play with the objects now we take the object away from letter c 
you take the object away from letter C. Now you can see where there's O. O means object. So where there's O, you show you have the object. The object there, and the head is upwards. Why do you say head is upward? Because there's an arrow. An arrow points the head. Arrow points the head. Either of an image or the object. So at point O, there is an object standing there. The head is pointing up. So the first thing, you need to take a ruler, draw a ray from the head towards the mirror parallel. Draw a ray from the object towards the mirror. And whenever you hit the line of that mirror, then what happens? It passes through letter F. You can see the ray diagram go and passes through letter F. And something important, whenever you draw a line, you must indicate an arrow. An arrow to show that is a ray. That ray goes, hit the mirror, and reflected through point F. Then there's another ray passing through C. Can you look at letter C? There's a ray coming from the top of the object, passing through C. And whenever it hits the mirror, you can see it is reflected back there. Reflected back there. Why is this reflected back through C? We said any image passing through letter C, any image passing through letter C must be reflected. Must be reflected. Any ray passing through letter C, any ray passing through letter C must be reflected in the same path. Must be reflected in the same path. So you can see they intersect. Are you seeing the intersecting point? Look at it. They intersect between C and F. So there's an arrow drawn there. There's a very small arrow, very small arrow drawn between letter C and F. That arrow means the image. And you can see the head is going downwards. So we need to understand the characteristics of that image. The obvious one, the first one, is that image is real. We said whenever the actual rays, real lines of rays intersect, then that is real image. So image is real. The second one you can see, uh, look at it, the arrow is going downwards, which means image is upside down. Image is inverted. Image is inverted. So you have said image is real, image is inverted. Then if you look at it, it's very small. The image is very small, which means diminished. The image is diminished. Diminished means smaller in size than the object. And lastly, the image is formed between C and F. The image is formed between C and F. So you have said the image is formed between C and F. The image is real. The image is inverted. And the image is diminished. Also, part D. Again, you play with the object. Now the object, part D, you can see the object is between C and F. Part D, the object is between C and F. The object is between C and F. You can write D, object, between C and F. So if you look at where there is C and F, <coughs> look at between C and F, there is an object there. You see the object is normally pointing upward and you give a letter O. So that object between letter C and F, then you draw a ray from the top towards the mirror. You draw a ray from the top towards the mirror. The object is, is there between C and F. You just play around with it. Now we have put it between C and F. And when you draw a ray parallel to the principal axis, then it gets reflected back through F. You can see it is moving and when it hits the mirror, then it gets reflected through F. Again, when you draw another ray, look at the top of that object, there's a ray passing through C. That ray goes, and upon hitting the mirror, you said, any ray which passes through C, even if you don't look at it, that ray must just come through that same, same line. That is a hint. Whenever you see a ray passing through C, just know that this ray must come back to the same, same path. Same, same path. So you can see they intersect at the lower side. They intersect at the lower side. And where they intersect, 
we put an arrow there where they intersect we put an arrow there and you draw it so you can see this our arrow is pointing downwards look at letter i i means image so the image is formed downwards the image is formed downwards so you can be asked give the characteristics of image formed an object is between c and f you see the part d means object between c and f so the first thing is image is real second thing image is inverted and third one you can see the image is bigger quite bigger than the object so image is magnified image is magnified so you'll say image is formed behind c image is real and image is inverted and image is magnified and e part e object at a now you move the object move the object previously in d it was between c and f in part d this object was between c and f but now we move it now to point f object at a the same rules apply you take a ruler you draw a straight line from the top of the object towards the mirror and it comes through letter f and again you pass it through c you pass it through c from the top you draw a set line through mirror then it gets reflected through the same point then where they intersect where they intersect is where the image is formed but look at this one keenly do you see any intersecting point after reflection you can look, you can look at it are those rays intersecting no you can see those rays after reflection they go parallel after reflection they go parallel and which means something parallel can never meet any two straight lines can never meet so we say in this case our image is at infinity in this case our image is at infinity so whenever you ask give the characteristics of image formed when the object is at point a you can see after reflection those rays move parallel so what will you say the image is formed at infinity and the last one when now you move it from point a remember the previous one object was point f now move it again just play around with it and now the object is between f and p p was the center of the mirror you can see where p is written so when the object is between f and p then now you can see the object there you see the object is pointing upward so take a ruler draw a line from the object to the mirror take a ruler draw a line from the top of the object to the mirror put an arrow and you said whenever you draw any line from the object to the mirror that may, ray must pass through what f must pass through f that's the first step the second step take another ruler draw a straight line from the object towards the mirror you can see and try to make it pass through c whenever it pass through c it gets reflected in the same same path so i want to look at it keenly when those rays come from the mirror look at the point f the ray moves downwards and also at the top one the ray also move downwards but this thing it seems as if they are they are diverging the rays are diverging which means if you continue drawing those straight lines they will not meet on the lower side so what do you do you extrapolate you extrapolate extrapolate means you put some extensions you extend it backwards and whenever you're extending it backward you must use dotted rays you must use dotted rays so you can see we put some dotted rays dotted 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 until they meet behind the mirror so this image is formed by what dotted rays so what do you say image is virtual whenever image is formed by dotted rays image is virtual and you can see 
this red dress where they just said the foot and arrow indicate that that is the image and you also draw even the image itself you draw using dotted lines the image itself you draw using dotted lines why because it is formed from dotted rays so you can see you can ask give us the characteristics of the image formed an object is between point f and p the person who can see obvious one our image is just dotted it means image is what virtual that's the first one image is virtual simply because you can see the dotted word rays the second one the image is what erect can you look at it the image is pointing same side as the object so the image is standing so we say the image is what erect image is erect or you can say image is upright the first one image is virtual second one image is erect or upright and third one you can see image is uh -huh, look at it is it smaller or bigger than the object obviously the image is bigger than the object so we say image is magnified image is magnified so what will you say image is formed behind the mirror one image is a virtual image is erect and image is magnified so that's what you simply need to know about a concave mirror how to draw the lines how to describe the images and how to indicate the side in which the image is formed the next one is a convex mirror and a convex mirror you can see it is curved it's curved outside outside outwards it's curved outwards so it means the reflecting surface is the outer side and in a convex mirror there's one thing you simply need to know that all its images are virtual all its images are virtual why do you say all its images are virtual come to point o you can see o means the object then you draw a ray parallel then that ray because its f is at the behind of the mirror what do you need to do you simply behave as if that ray is coming from f so you just extend it or extrapolate again if you draw the ray from the head to pass through C, you can see there's another ray coming from the top of the object, then you try to make it pass through C. But see now, behind the mirror, you put the dots. So when these dots line, dotted lines intersect, we see the dotted rays, then one image, a very small one is formed. So for a convex mirror, there's only one characteristic, one concept which you need to understand, that all its images are virtual. I see a convex mirror, you can see it in the side mirrors of the vehicles or the motorbikes. So the image is virtual. Uh, something obvious also you can see. Look at the object and look at the image. You can see objects bigger than the image or the image is smaller than the object. So we say the image is diminished. We say the image is diminished. The image is diminished. So the image is always formed behind the mirror. The image is virtual, erect, and always diminished. And always diminished. So that's what you simply need to know about the concave mirror, convex mirror, concave mirror, and convex mirror. So do more revision on the same. Do more revision on the same, and make sure you normally revise. Do more on the same and make sure you normally revise. In our next video, we'll be discussing magnification and how to draw ray diagrams on graph.